taking a look at two different play styles, early game aggression versus scaling, when you're a newer team, or say you're a developing team, obviously aggression works in your favor because it's exactly what it is. You're aggressive, you're early, you're getting into the fights. How are some ways that these teams that prefer these mid game to late games can kind of stop the bleeding or not even allow for bleeding to happen in the early game against these aggressive Yeah, if you know that a team has Ryoma, they're going to invade your jungle with Malik, Ryoma, super strong in the side lanes. Uh, just trade. Don't try to contest it because if you lose that trade, you are in deep trouble because they're going to take your blue buff, your jungle, and then they get, they get both the red and blue side buff on their side, and they have this level 2, level 3 uh, advantage, and they're going to they're gonna rin rinse and repeat. So just trade jungles. Don't try to play their game. Play your game. Trade objectives. Trade jungles. And keep the bleeding low. AOV 101 from Master Suije himself. I'll get him a... Uh a little, a little wizard hat, so he can he can prove. <laughs> Ignis. He, yeah, a little Ignis hat. You know, a little. It, it, I'm definitely gonna get you a hat. I don't know. <laughs> you guys, before week six, it's happening. Halloween's I'm, not I'm, coming yet. No, it doesn't matter. You're always a dressed up individual mind. But let's get back to the bands. We'll we'll yeah. worry about Ignis later. Teamy, Zenial, Malik, Max. Nothing too far out of the ordinary. Let's get Pretty the power standard. picks. Three of the four. I mean, you can consider Teamy side lane in some instances, but three of the four side laners severely limiting these side lane options. Yeah, they are taking Malik away because I think Jungle Book did their homework. I know Mowgli, he does a lot of research on drafts and he drafts is very innovative actually. So I'm really excited to see what they're gonna come up with. They need to ban Superman here. They ban Malik because iFlex is just too good on Malik. So they need to take away from him. And they're gonna ban a Superman. And with Violet being taken away, we have Liliana as the first pick. Lily Liliana looks pretty good. Liliana right? is an option which could, despite the fact of Liliana's prowess that she provides in that mid lane, We've seen these counterpick potentials from Jungle Book Squad. We saw in the relegation, they know how to counterpick a composition appropriately Ooh, against Yorn. the squad. Yorn, it looks like it's going to be the hover bit. No, <laughs> Nova says we're not going to let that one happen. Us. They're just trolling us. Now Wonder Woman and Ryoma are open. I would take both because that gives you such a dominant side lane. But they're going to go ahead and opt for Wonder Woman Lindis. And as a result, Ryoma is going to be taken by the side of Nova. And we can see, you know, Nova plays Ryoma extremely well. You know, they have, you know, Omen is open as well. Some really strong side laners. Lubu is still open. So side lane wise, you know, you have a lot of good options. Wonder I think, Woman. I think here they'll probably take either the Lumber or they'll probably Lumber and take a, like a side lane because there's a lot of side lane options. Lubu, of course. Mina, Ooh, Mina instead. could potentially oh, wow. create an option. Now, if you want to think about the mind games that Nova could potentially playing, they hovered back and forth between the Yorn and the Liliana. Is there potential of picking that Yorn and having the having the safety of the Mina in that second pick? Is there an option? Or yeah, Mina doesn't give the most peel. She just uh, detract. De you know, it's a deterrent. De yeah, deterrent. It's a deterrent. You know, distract the enemies by taunting and stuff. And look at the kill growth pick here. Those are some really heavy deep dive, and that's the Mina dive. The, you know, Mina goes in aggressively, flicker, ult, Dark Dominion, taunt, and then everyone gets bunched up, and then Kilgroth and Zephys and Lubu all do AoE, knock up stuns, and just so much damage from Kilgroth, the AoE, when he has his Enraged Spear up. And L'Oreal is a hard counter into this composition when they dive. If they let L'Oreal get a little late game, they're going to have a really hard time winning. Lots of aggression, obviously, onto the side of Nova Esports. We were expecting that. You saw the scaling potential coming out of Jungle Book Squad as well. You gave a little bit of pointers on how they're able to prolong these fights and make these happen. But now that you have the compositions a little bit more clearly, mm. does that strategy stay the same for the side here for Jungle Book Squad? Yeah, I think they need to not lose the early game and just scale up. Even they have really strong early game, the, the side of... of uh, Nova has has a much stronger early game draft, um, and Kilgroth is actually really good into L'Oreal once he reaches level four because L'Oreal cannot slow him. Um, he has his ultimate, which is Gore Lord, which basically makes him immune to CC. So he he literally stay on top of her and just kill her, whale her to death. So they got to be careful when Kilgroth has an ultimate. They need to peel and just back off and not fight him when he is ulting and has his uh, enraged spear active. They need to back off and then then re-engage once that's down. Well, now let's go ahead and check out what Twitch chat thinks with this. Jungle Book Squad versus Team oh, wow. Nova Esports. And wow, 86% in favor of Nova. Now, Team Queso was predicted to win the last time. Right. So, Twitch chat, you're 0 for 1 for the day. Hey, I'm keeping track of you, too. Yes, <laughs> you. Not you, but definitely you. Keeping track of what you guys think. Jungle Book Squad 
with that 86% are going to be looking to prove themselves here in the quarterfinals to potentially get that rematch up against Team Noob later on this week. But quarterfinal number two has begun. Nova Esports taking on the Jungle Book squad. Yeah, and we have a pause here, but I love that Lubu has execute there. And you, the Mina flicker, you guys will have to watch out for Y01's flicker Mina ultimates. That's something that is pretty a meta composition with top teams because she would just ult in there and then pull everyone into her Dark Dominion. And then you have Liliana with the huge AoE damage. You have Zephys with a huge AoE stun. You have Kilgroth running in there. And he does AoE, slashes back and forth. They can literally lead the whole enemy team if they play this correctly. So I'm super excited to see how this combo is going to play out on the side of Nova. Now, in line with the aggressive composition that Nova Esports has drafted, they've also decided to equip themselves with double punish. Talk to me a little bit about this double punish versus single punish play style that you're seeing from the differences of both of these teams. Yeah, with, a, with an assassin dive competition that they have there, you want to go with double punish because it allows you to basically steal jungle, pressure jungle, and invade a lot more. And it's exactly what Sepka is doing here. Let's see if he's able to get it here. No, he's going to back off because it's a 2v1. And it's a really smart play by him. And looks like he's going to get caught out here, unfortunately. And he's going to give over first blood to the side of jungle and looking so good right now for the side of Oxy there getting that kill. Finding himself caught up a little bit too deep and what better way to push your team to the late game than securing the extra resources that those kills provide. A great effort by Oxy and talk to me a little bit about this Lindis. We didn't really highlight it as much in the draft phase. How is that Lindis going to be able to play in these team fights versus this deep dive potential of Nova Esports? Yeah, Lindis is, wants to fight from the bush. When she exits the bush, she has two auto attacks that come out and she also has a speed boost. She also can set traps and slow people down. And that traps, they last for a good two minutes. You can set two traps at a time. Gives a lot of vision and avoids you getting yanked. And when she has that ability, she unlocks that ability the light of the moonlight ability on top there. Whenever she hits a third attack, you see it proc on Mina there. It does extra damage when she procs that third attack. And look at that decisive play. That nice five-man rotation right to mid there, getting the kill onto the Mina. This is Mina's little weakness. She is not a, a big of a, a tank as like a Thane is or Lumber is. So she is more successful like Alice is to to dive because she's a little squishier. So now looking that the aggressive maneuvering of Nova Esports is now being countered by a couple little kills to the side of Jungle Book Squad. We are just at over two minutes. Obviously now you have Abyssal Dragon on the mark as well. What sort of rotations are Nova going to be looking for to potentially secure themselves some of these early dragons that we see uh, yeah, a lot of they, these teams they do? Almost up. on cue. Yeah, they have to keep this up. And look at it. Nova is taking... Wow, they took the, the Spirit Sentinel and the Dragon. That is a huge play there. And that puts them in... A nice, you know, it doesn't, it, it basically gives them a little more gold so they don't fall as behind. But that was such a smart objective play. They're not in the lead and they're able to pull that off, which then it evens out or lessens their deficit a little more there. So, really nice, smart play by Nova. A little bit of a counter jungle coming out of Jungle Book Squad onto the Sage side for Nova Esports. Nova. We've seen a lot of aggression for them in the ability to close out games throughout the first couple weeks of play here in the Valor Series. But one of the biggest struggles that Nova Esports has actually found is when they find themselves behind in the earlier stages, they aren't able to play from behind. And so this is a real test already of if they're able to play from behind. And we know the efficiency that they have when they're ahead, but it's these kind of holes that they have to climb out of that they haven't been as successful in the earlier stages. Of yeah, and then Mowgli will be key there, because Mowgli, wow, look at that, using Lunar Champion to secure the kill there. And again, I love what these teams are here. You saw what Team Noob did that when Vex played, is when the, your jungler gets double buffs, the red and blue, you want to force the fights. You want to go aggressive, and you got to be really careful uh, when you see your opponent getting the double buff like that. And look at Tepka just going really ham on his tower. It looks like he will probably be able to get it here, and he secures it. That's a really good trade for him. Dodging the Wonder Woman ultimate, the Bracelet's Commission does not land. And Sepka, again, this is a guy we talked about as the player to watch, and he is just making plays. Even when his team is behind, he's able to give his team an advantage to try to get back into the game. The cross map pressure of an early tower and allowing the minion waves to go a little bit deeper definitely helps the teams when they are behind. But despite the fact that the first tower does go over if you're into the favor of Nova Esports. He's still have about a 700 gold, but Crane is going to get himself caught out. He's going to try to get himself away. Is it going to be enough? Oxy, Mowgli, as well as Madeleine are there. Crane, unfortunately, 
will find himself off in a little bit. Ooh. Actually, just as I stand out, he's going to use his ultimate to get out. <laughs> going to try to bob the He's just the trying to delay as much as possible here. I don't think he's going to get the kill on him. And what better way than to give the kill over to your carry? A difficulty that a lot of teams face is pumping too many resources into one member on the team, and it turns into a high-risk, high-reward situation. But of the four kills, they have been divided into three separate heroes, three separate players for the Jungle Book squad, which definitely allows them to scale up better as a unit as opposed to one single player. Yeah, what's tough here for Nova is they're playing against an ADC comp that they needed to shut down in the early game. And you can see, again, Jungle Book just playing so smart. Their macro strategy, and it's got to be Mowgli's mastermind here because he was known for his macro strategy and other mobile MOBAs that he's played as a professional. But again, Oxy is being aggressive when they take the blue and red buff there. And look at the, the combo and damage from uh, Liliana there. Once she gets through late game, they have they gotta watch her because she outpokes the entire enemy team. And look at this collapse here onto the side of uh, of the dragon side of the lane. However, they're not able to secure the kill, unfortunately, on the Roma. Oxy, as well as the other members of Jungle Book Squad, have put themselves in a fairly advantageous position already just now. But with the first Abyssal Dragon going over onto Nova, they have the timings down appropriately. And it, all five members are going to float to the bottom side of the map. So, despite the fact that the counter jungle pressure has floated into the favor of Jungle Book Squad, the hard objectives, the towers, two Abyssal Dragons now are going into Nova Esports, which is still flowing in line with the efficiency that we've seen them had sub six minutes. Yeah, Nova is doing such a good job. You can see that they are going aggressive on the dragon side of the map but before the dragon spawns. That is a really smart play. That means you're exerting dominance. You're taking control of the dragon side of the jungle. And as a result, they five-man rotate onto the Abyssal Dragon. So if Jungle Book is aware of that, they need to trade towers and objectives because Doing a five-man rotation like that, and look at it, they're just dominating the dragon side of the map. This is exactly what you need to do to win the early and mid game, because when you have control of the dragon side, and now, because of that, they're rushing the, dra the, the, the dark stair, which is a little risky if Nova knows what they're up to. I don't think they see them just yet. The seagull was taken, so you've got clear vision over onto the side of the safe side jungle. Sebs is going to realize that there's a nice one there, but the dark stair will go over, over into the favor of Oxy. Sebgo will find himself between a hard rock and a hard piece of <laughs> Death! And that's going to secure themselves the kill. Tower Red Tower de destroyed. does go down. That's going to be the second tower in favor of Nova Esports, but Dark Slayer in the hands of Jungle Book Squad. Yeah, now they need to take towers now. A now they need to convert this Dark Slayer destroyed. into at least two or preferably three towers, which is going to give them a nice lead. They have to protect the Slayer side here, the, the left side of the map. Nova needs to protect this tower, but it looks like they're not going to be able to do that. Actually, they well, they scare off the side of Jungle Book, and they back off there, and they try to make a play for mid tower here. They gotta take this tower. Unfortunately, no. They clear the wave fast enough. This is exactly how you want to play defense. You clear the wave quickly as possible, so that they cannot do any do minimal damage on that tower. Because when the waves are clear, these towers have significant percentage damage reduction. The higher the tier tower is up, the more percentage damage reduction they get from enemy hero attacks. So, Sweet you've secured yourself the Dark Slayer. You're down in a couple towers, and you have a solid amount of wave clear on the enemy team. How are you going to be able to best utilize this Dark Slayer to ensure that you can continue to build up your resources? Yeah, take objective is exactly what they're doing. However, I think Mina, and although they don't have Dark Slayer, Nova should engage. Chagnar used his ultimate. It, it is not up. Chaos Protection is not up to protect the team. So, if Mina can flicker in there and use her ultimate, they can actually turn around and win a fight really easily. However, I, Nova doesn't want to take that risk. You know, Jungle Book has the Dark Slayer, so they're going to play more calculated here and just kind of stay under lane. Exactly what doing with now Dark Slayer gone. This is their time to go in, but now, because they waited, Chaos Protection on Mowgli is right back up, and Chagnar can then counter the Dark Dominion coming from Mina. Almost nine minutes into the game. Despite the back and forth, it is still only about a 2,000 gold lead into the favor of Jungle Book Squad, and... Even though this game is a lot slower than what we might think, considering the fact that there are, have been six kills already, the longer that this game plays out, the more back and forth moments that Nova versus Jungle Book Squad has works into the favor of Jungle Book Squad because that's the composition that they drafted for. Yeah, Jungle Book Squad has the ADC composition. That's going to scale better into the late game with L and Lindis. 
L'Oreal late game is going to do so much work onto the composition of Nova. So late game now, they need to focus on that L'Oreal. You know, she's getting her items, she's getting her build, and if they can taunt her and catch her off guard, they can do a lot of work here. As now we're going to find ourselves another fight on the top side of the map. Look at the backline dive that said Chris providing for his team. The lifesteal is immeasurable as four members aren't going to be able to take him down. However, if Iflex will end up falling, Galubu going down to the other members of Jungle Book Squad, and that's going to create just enough of an opportunity for them to push into the mid lane. Tier 1 mid lane turret down in favor of Jungle Book. Skull King played that fight so well. The timing of his Endure was just perfect. They let the Iflex over-engage, over-extend, and they, they, his entire team focused on it while he was protected under Endure. And you can see the amount of escapability that L'Oreal has when she's under ultimate. They try to get onto her. You know, Lubu, you know, and, and, and Crayon, they wasted their abilities and they could not CC her because of that beautiful Endure timing. And as a result, L'Oreal escaped that fight and did a lot of AoE damage and they had to back off. And as a result, that fight turned in the favor of Jungle Ball. Abyssal Dragon, number four, of the game is now going to get split. Two for two, Jungle Book Squad and Nova Esports. Now, this is where we're going to get to see the true first test of Nova Esports and their ability to play from behind. Despite the fact that they have had to face the juggernauts of Team Noob and for the Dream, their comeback mechanics have not been stellar over the course of the last two weeks. And so being down now, almost 5,000 gold to Jungle Book Squad, down this amount of gold, despite only being one tower behind, what are some of these glimmers of hope that Nova can look yeah, for? Yeah, they gotta bait out the Chognar ultimate. They have to you know, catch someone out and bait out that ultimate and then leverage. Mina has not been doing much in this fight. She's not been using her ultimate to really make some plays here and they have to leverage that. Once Chognar uses ultimate, they have to take advantage of that because that's the, that's the biggest counter to Mina's Dark Dominion. And if they can basically make a play happen, and allow Mobi to not use his Chaos Protection to protect his team, then Nova has a real good chance of, of winning some team fights here. But it's going to be really tough because, honestly, Jungle Book is just playing so safely right now. Mowgli is playing very calculated, and he's not overly extending as Chognar that's like the, he did last that, week. That's the difficulty that a lot of teams have been facing in the Valor Series for both Europe and North America. It's they find themselves lead, they find themselves ahead, and they push, push, push. They don't have any level of yeah. patience. But the patience that you see coming out of Jungle Book Squad, not only are they trying to manage the waves appropriately to get them crashing on the other side of the turret, but they're allowing this split push power with the strength that Madeline and yeah, this Yeah, one thing I want to point out, what Nova did there, you saw what Crayon did. He actually split the wave at the top, and he didn't even let the wave even reach the tower. They need to do that. They, they failed to do that here with this top tower, so they could not protect the tier 2 top tower, but they protected the tier 2 middle tower because of how they cut the wave above the tower. But because they're not cutting the wave here, it's getting the tower, they're going to probably lose this tower right here. Lots of AD on the side of Jungle Book Squad. Oxy is going to end up going ultimate. 3 0 and 4 for the Lindus thus far. Tier 2 mid lane turret ends up going down. 0 1 will find out falling as well. The flicker's not going to be enough for 0 1 as now the onslaught continues onto the mid lane. Double kill ends up being, and look at that damage that Ryoma is filing off. It ends up being a triple kill for Oxy. And just like that, Jungle Book Squad. What looked like a slight lead now has pushed themselves into a tremendous advantage. Yeah, what they need to do is uh, they need to distract and take care of the Lindus. Like, I mean, this is going to be really hard to execute, but Lindus is being untouched. So Mina needs to flicker to the back line and, like, CC the Lindus style and force the Chognar to waste his Chaos Protection to try to save Lindus and allow Kilgroth and the enemy team to just then focus the front line. And then once the cast protection is down, then you can use Dark Dominion. Like, they, this Mina has to do something in these fights because without Mina doing much and just getting poked down like this, and Sepka is just going in and getting focused, that, that's that's not how you want to play Kilgroth. When Kilgroth goes in, he cannot get out. So you want, everyone needs to go in with him. Kilgroth, Lubu have so much lifesteal. They have so much sustain. They want to go in together, get these knockoffs, get this AoE damage so that they can potentially turn this fight around. But so far, they're not able to do that. And you look at the items there. The team has some armor, but not that much armor, actually. So the side of Nova, they still have a chance to come back, but Nina needs to do work in these fights. And that's their chance to really come back. 
Dark Slayer is getting demolished quite quickly by Jungle Book Squad. You have some sort of rebuttal potentially. Remember, two punishes on the side of Nova, but Jungle Book Squad is not going to let that happen. As Skull King is going to bob and weave inside wow. on the outside. However, the Dark Slayer though, will go down into the favor of Nova. They're going to try to get themselves a little bit of comeback, but Madeline and the rest of the team, Oxy, surviving with one pixel of health left. Four members are down. Crayon is the only one left alive. He's going to dip, dodge, duck, and get the hell out of dodge. <laughs> but it doesn't matter this because... This might be the game here. It's a 30-second respawn timer, and it's five, four people. The, the whole team is up. The, and then there's a lack of focus from Nova here is really, really causing them to lose these fights. They needed to focus down whoever Kilgrav was on. Sipka was doing so much damage on the back line. And because they were not coordinated, Jungle Book takes the win decisively. Just like that, Jungle Quick Squad secures themselves a game one victory. What flew so much into the favor of Nova Esports with the aggressive composition. Finally, we have a team that plays to the strengths of the late game. And just like that, it was Jungle Book Squad. Like we said, they came away with the victory, putting your predictions a little bit on thin ice, don't you think, Sweet Jay? Yeah, a little bit. And I think, honestly, Nova, that's not Nova I know. I mean, they, they have really solid four to five man rotations. They fight together, they don't split up like that. And I felt like Sepka would go in and do so much damage to the front line or the back line. It didn't matter. They were not focusing the same hero. Like, they, they want to have that team bunch up because Kilgroth does so much AoE, Zephys, everyone does a lot of AoE damage and they need to force the enemy team to bunch up and try to protect L'Oreal and just let Kilgroth go, go ham. And I felt like they didn't play that way. They split up and allowed Kilgroth to get kited. And as a result, they lost a lot of these fights. Well, we're going to, in a second, we're getting the, we're going to get an opportunity to actually show the team fight power that you that you just spoke about when it comes to Jungle Book Squad, we're going to be able to telestrate one of the, uh, the the last fight that we actually had on the bottom side with the Dark Slayer with a bounce back and forth. But let's talk a little bit about the the missteps of Nova. We we know that they are powerful when they're ahead. We know that they have that potential to close out games. They had the rotations early, but when they got behind, it was. It was utter disaster. Yeah, I mean, they they fell behind, but they're doing so well in the objective game. I mean, they had the they got the dragon and the bat sentinel when it spawned. I mean, their timing. Sepka took the bat sentinel, and then they had a four man rotation to take dragon, and they were behind like one k gold. I mean, they stayed in the game as best they could, but what it came down to was their team fighting. They were not on the same page. They won honestly. They they played a better objective game than Jungle Book, but Jungle Book team fought better. And this fight, this game, if you can team fight better in late game. The objectives don't matter as much. Well, let's go ahead and get a clearer picture of that. We're going to pull up the Telestrator on your screen. And Sweejay, walk us through. This was the last fight. Obviously, you had power of the of the side for Jungle Book Squad, but let's walk us yeah, down. Yeah, watch the focus here. They needed to focus down L'Oreal. Look at the damage that she took already. Sepka goes in here, and we're going to pause, and we're going to see like the route that Sepka takes. You're going to see right here, um, Sepka's going to go. Oh, oh, let me clear my screen. Sepka's going to go in, and he's going to go up and back to the back line there. And as a result, they need to focus him um, on the on the back. They need to then fight with the kill broth. And we're going to watch here how that's going to play out. And we're going to play from here, and we're going to see how that's going to play out. Sorry, the Telestrator here is not clearing the screen, so sorry. But look, watch Sepka here in the back line. He's doing so much damage. Look at Oxy is so low. They need to help him at this point here. You know, Liliana tries to help, but it gets insta-deleted. And unfortunately, you know, Kraya's not there. And look at Oxy running away with just a sliver of health. And they had the Dark Slayer too. So as soon as they took the Dark Slayer, they needed to focus all that firepower onto that back line with Sipka. And they would have decisively won that fight. Well, it was just like that. The Jungle Book squad walks away with the game one victory. Page is over. Let's turn the page over now to game number two. Sweejay. What is Nova going to have to do? Does the draft phase change for them? Does this aggressive composition that they have change? Do they go for something more scaling, play into maybe the playbook hands that you had coming out of Jungle Book Squad, or what, what differs? Yeah, I think they should switch up to ADC. ADC is the new meta right now. Um, and if you can't win early game with an Assassin comp, and you don't execute it properly, Assassin comps are super rewarding, but high risk. Because if you don't execute the early game, then you fall behind an ADC comp, you're done for. They're, they're, it's hard to come back. Um, so they need, I think they should go for an ADC meta composition and play ADC versus ADC against Jungle Book here. 
flipping it over onto the side of Jungle Book Squad. They will have blue. Nova taking up the counterpick potential on the red. With this prediction that you're going to have more of an, an AD carry presence for the side of Nova, what adaptations should Jungle Book Squad make to make this game a little bit easier on their hands? Yeah, uh, Jungle Book, they should secure key side laners, right? And then take the better ADC. So if Violet's banned, take Lindis, right? And then if Nova can play Slims, that's good for them because Lindis and Slims are the two next best ADCs after Violet. So I would love to see a Slims come out here against a, a, a Lindis and see that ADC versus ADC matchup because both of those ADCs are really strong, but Slims has that huge stun potential, that spear. If he can land it, it just does so much work. Is there any warrant for either one of these teams to potentially pull out the Newcomer Wisp? With the AD carry, I know, I know no. you're not sold on the Wisp, Sweet Jay. I know, Wisp I know is this meta. isn't your, I know it's not your, your, your cream of the crop. But does she fit in the potential? If if it's a comp that bunches up a lot, then Wisp would work really well. But it's just her passive is just not what an ADC should have. I mean, they need to rework that passive because it's a kamikaze. You die, you place bombs, and and on and, and ADC it's not really, it doesn't synergize, right? If you have it on like a Necroth or an Assassin, like Ari, then yeah, that makes complete sense because you go and you die and your bombs can just blow people up. But on a Wiss, Wiss doesn't want to go in like that. And I feel like it's a mismatch. And that's why Wiss has so much potential. If they just change her passive, she can be a really top tier ADC. I mean, it could create a potential if the if you have diving Assassins onto the back line for her. Maybe they do end up picking off Wisp, but <laughs> you have a little bit of extra damage. Guys, yeah. I'm dead, but you know what? I can at least help out in the back line a little bit, but with the bans being done and underway, let's go ahead and take a look at these. Malik, Superman, Max being banned away by Jungle Book Squad. Xenial yeah. and Teamy. What do we look and think in the last one's going to be there for uh, Nova? Potentially Liliana here, but it's typical meta bans here. It's just the typical Superman, the Max, the Malik, Xenial, Teamy. Yeah, Liliana's going to be banned here. It's just very meta compositions, and I'm waiting for a team to do some off meta bans because, you know, that's going to throw off their opponent team. Liliana does not have that high of a win rate, actually. I know she's really good and she's really strong, but if you look at it, Liliana has lost like Xenio has lost and and these although they're priority bans they don't have that high of a win rate that you think would warrant such a high percentage ban rate less than 65 percent win rate sitting Liliana right now in the Valor series for both Europe and North America combined you talked about the AD carry you talked about the potential that that creates does that warrant the potential first pick Lindis here for the side of Jungle Book Squad securing that early? Or do you no, feel like something a little bit yeah, more? Yeah, I think first picking Lindis is really risky because you're going to give the team, uh, you know, key picks over on the side of uh, the side laners. There's a lot of side laners, you know, that are taken here. Xenio is a key side laner, Superman, Malek, they're all key side laners. So now you have like Omen, you have Ryoma, you have Wonder Woman. But if you give a team Ryoma, Wonder Woman, and then they pick an ADC with that, then you're facing two of the most dominant side leaners against like maybe a Lubu and a potential Omen here or Kilgroth, and that's going to give them a really hard matchup. So what is first picked here for uh, for the side of Nova? Jungle or Book sorry, Squad. Jungle Book. Jungle they Squad. may opt with Ryoma potentially here or Wonder Woman. Yep, they're going to secure Ryoma Wonder Woman, and that denies the Ryoma Wonder Woman pick on the side of Nova. So now Nova definitely needs to take Ryoma and potentially a key um, like another top tier. Uh, side laner. So Kilgroth can be side lane as well, but I guess they're going to go with the same composition here and just try to execute it better with Lubu and Kilgroth. A big factor that, or a big problem rather, that they were facing in game number one revolved around the counter jungling and the skirmishing that the side of Jungle Book Squad wasn't scared to do. They got a couple kills. You saw some, some single roams coming out of Nova that didn't necessarily work out in their favor. But Jungle Book Squad is going to stick to what works as well. The yeah, Lindus is going to get locked them in. The same composition. Oh, they switch over to Chognar. Yeah, Chognar is a comfort pick for Mowgli. So I'm surprised that Nova doesn't ban it because Mowgli has been playing so much Chognar left and right. This is probably one of his best support heroes. I really like the Thane, comp the Thane uh, in here because Thane. Chognar doesn't really have a counter to Thane. He can't really Chaos Protect against his Excalibur Ultimate, which does so much AoE damage when you're when your target percentage HP is low. So Thane is a, such a good pick into a Chognar because Mina wouldn't work, Alice wouldn't work. Thane is an awesome pick. So I'm really excited for Nova's draft so far here. Nova securing themselves the Thane, the L'Oreal, Lindis, and the Tulin. So very similar 
setup that you have coming from Jungle Book Squad. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right, Sweet J? Yeah, exactly. I'm liking the side of Nova. They need to execute this early game more aggressively. They need to watch out for the uh, rotations from the side of Jungle Book because of that Ryoma. Um, as long as Lubu and uh, the Kilk, the Zephys can hold off the side lane and make it to mid game. Once Zephys turns level four, they can make a ton of plays with that because that's a huge power spike when Zephys hits level four. Taking a look at the composition of Nova, obviously you have a couple substitutions in. How does the Thane fit in well with the team fighting in the later stages of the game with this composition that you have coming out of Nova? Yeah, because I mean, when Thane charges in and then he does a slow knock up, Chognar just uses his chaos protection to cancel that, but. The, the key is his ultimate cannot be protected because Chognar, it's not a CC. It does pure damage, low percent HP, and that's exactly what they need to do. Thane can go in and tank a lot of damage, let Kilgroth, Lubu, then CC their opponents, and then Chognar needs to pick what CC he wants to cancel. And it's just a great sword down exactly. on your face. Exactly, and, and the team likes to bunch up to protect Lindis. So if they bunch up against Thane and he ults, that's a lot of damage, and Thane can really carry a lot of these fights. In the hours that I've put into Arena of Valor thus far, the most fulfilling ability <laughs> is definitely the Thane just great Excalibur. sword just on your the face. The name of it is called Excalibur. So he lifts his sword up and poof, just smashes into the team, and Excalibur just destroys everybody. What's that sound effect? Can you do that one again? Look at that new voice we actor, go. guys. Well, exactly. we want to know what you guys are thinking. Make sure you take over to Twitter. Use that hashtag, Valor Series. Let us know if our jokes are actually as good as I think they are. They probably are. It doesn't matter. Game number two is going to be underway. Mowgli and the Jungle Book squad have secured themselves one game and are now one game away from tasting Team Noob in the semifinals. Nova looking to get themselves back. Sweejay, let's do it. Yes, guys, give your energy to Nova. If they lose, my prediction rate is going to go lower. So Nova <laughs> is the team that needs your energy right now. He doesn't so. care about you. He just cares about his win percentage. <laughs> exactly. You guys, are you seeing this right now? So one thing is they, oh wow, he still goes in there. It's a little risky for Wiser one. I'm I'm curious why Iflex didn't uh, uh, take the blue and reset it. Like, aggro the blue, pull him out of the range, and let him reset, and waste that invade and the timing there. And I'm, I'm surprised that Iflex did not. They saw that, they are in position, they knew that they're invading. So it was a very interesting decision by the side of Iflex to not do that. Zero one is gonna get himself caught up a little bit. Tankiness coming out of the Thane, but is it gonna be enough? It is indeed. The last little tick of Skull Things, Tulin is not gonna be able to finish off that kill. But all the meanwhile, Jungle Book, oh, what, hello? Hello? A little bit of a 1v1 situation as Iflex ends up going down to the Ryoma. A yeah, bit of, this uh, is why Ryoma is so strong early game. Like, honestly, level 1, level 2, not many heroes can really compete against him. Lubu needs to get to level 4 to be able to contest and trade against a Ryoma in lane because of his Conquer ultimate. And this is something they need to be careful of. Like, this is why Nova, interesting enough, did not want to get the Ryoma and Crayon puts himself in a really... Crayon puts himself in a bad position and gives over two deaths. And this is not looking good for Nova in this early game already. Jungle Book Squad didn't have the most successful of early games despite the counter pressure. The objective control still went into Nova's side. However, that adaptation is getting fixed and nipped right in the butt as First Abyssal Dragon goes to JBS. Yeah, Nova's now taking the, the Spirit Sentinel, which is a good trade. Although Dragon is a bigger objective to take, at least they are trading something. And now they, again, if they let Kilgroth, um, if they let Kilgroth scale up and they fight with this Kilgroth along with Thane engaging, they have a good chance to really execute these team fights and that's the key to Nova winning here but right now they're losing this early game you know they're 1k down it's not too bad but they need to stop the bleed and, and stop these picks here because they're going to turn level 4 soon and this is where Nova needs to make these plays once the Zephys and the Lubu hit level 4 and level 5. You got Mowgli, Oxy as well as Madeline coming into the side of the Might Buff trying to get himself another little piece of scuffle. Oxy will go down to the last auto attack of L'Oreal. Sebka, meanwhile, is going to be able to join the fray. Auto attack after auto attack. Wow, taking what out a great Mowgli. Play there. As Crane is going to be able to try to get onto the back line of the Ryoma. Oh, Ryoma is going to give nice himself a nice little flip. By Karen, but wow, look at that. Skull King again carrying with that oh, Endure so there. Shit. What a great play by him. And earlier there, you know, the key with Zephys is when he lands his ultimate, you need to go really hard because he has a, a his ultimate activates Thunderclap, which allows his abilities and all attacks to do additional magic damage every attack. So this is what makes Zephys so bursty. 
is actually because of the magic, the extra magic damage as a result of him landing his death from above ability and activating Thunderclap. So in the beginning of the fight, he had to back off. He played that perfectly on Zephyr's. If you don't land your ultimate, you need to back off and then come back in when it's off cooldown and then land your abilities and do and get some of these kills. And this is exactly what he did. And so far, Nova is looking pretty good in his team fights. If they keep this up, they may be able to pull this win out. As now we are at the four minute mark, Mowgli not going as too deep as what he <laughs> might want to. Doesn't have the support of his team just yet. Oxy in that Linda is something that we need to make sure we keep an eye on as well. Two, one, and one for her on that hero, already having Scorching Wind completed. As now the second Abyssal Dragon has spawned, Mowgli going in and getting that active. Ox is going to try to get himself a little damage, but they know the members of Nova are there waiting in the wayside. Mowgli's going to keep it down the tanky mammoth himself. Yeah, this is a little risky there because they know that he's trying to take Dragon. He's just holding it and getting low by the Dragon. Looks like they're going to go for the Dragon here. This is where Nova needs to turn this around. They need to try to steal this and turn this fight around. And we'll be able to do it here. We'll see. No, it's too late, unfortunately. They don't make it in time. And that was very surprising for Nova to just hand over the Dragon like that. They are not behind. They're pretty even. So it's interesting to give them a free Dragon. We've commented and praised Nova on their proactivity in every game. Despite the ones that they have lost, they still are proactive in the earlier stages of the game. But this game number two, just five minutes in, they're looking a lot more reactive, Sweet Jay. This isn't the Nova that we've used to see in the last couple weeks. Yeah, I would love for them to engage. You know, they have Fane. They, they can look, at, look how bunched up the side of Jungle Book is. And and now they're giving over the objectives. And and when in the last game, Nova was dominating and winning the objective game, taking Spirit Sentinel, taking the bat, and now they're kind of just giving it over to Jungle Book, which is not what they want to do. They want to get ahead here and keep their lead or get the lead and then snowball that lead. But so far, Nova is not doing what they want to do in this game. Jungle Book Squad has definitely shown improvements in between weeks two and three. The newcomers of last week have now found themselves in quite the lead against the longtime standing of Nova. We saw their effort in week number two. We saw the the difficulties that they faced in surviving until they got themselves into the mid to the late game. Sweet Jay, what did you definitely see, or have you definitely seen that these early game improvements have been worthwhile for Jungle Book Squad? Yeah, the good news is um, Crayon's not too far behind in his Zephy's there. He's able to invade enemy jungle and take it, but look at this Dark Slayer pick so early. Then this is, might look bad for the side of Jungle Book here because they have taken a Dark Slayer and they're at risk of losing this fight and they are gonna lose that fight. It's about 25% HP and that is gonna be the members of Nova now now flipping the script and securing themselves potentially an early Dark Slayer. All five members of Jungle Book Squad are up and around, but Crayon will end up wow. taking that Slayer. Three members make that four members of Jungle Book Squad are gonna fall. Madeline will secure herself her life. However, it was just like that. Nova turning things right around and now have them a 2,000 gold lead. Yeah, they need to go ahead and take mid tower, take two towers here, then rotate to bottom, take the third tower here because their wave is crashing down mid, bottom, and also look at the rotation from the side of Sefka. He's able to take the top tower. They get four towers and all these kills from that one Dark Slayer push. And that's what cost Jungle Book little risky to try to get the Dark Slayer with just three people there, not able to take it fast enough because they don't have the items. And as a result, they lost four towers, and look at the lead. It just swung to 4K. Crayon played that so well. He got the Dark Slayer. He landed that ultimate, secured it, and then look at the damage, the back line. You know, with, with Oxy being solo, they're able to secure the kill on that and turn that fight around completely. And now we're seeing the breath of life blown back into the lungs of Nova Esports. Oh, they need to jump on the Roma here. He has no escape. Because he used his first ability to jump out, he has no escape, and that's exactly what they did there. It's a very good play by Nova. Another kill onto the Rioma of Jungle Book Squad, and now the efficiency went ahead is starting to float into the favor, and it starts to become more apparent for the side of Nova Esports. Spirit Sentinel as well as Abyssal Dragon are gonna rock in their favor at just over the eight minutes. It was looking bleak. Nova was definitely starting. The explosion was starting to dwindle and they were starting to uh, compress themselves into an itty bitty, uh, not so not so feisty flame. But it has, that was that was bad, I tried. I, <laughs> I tried pulling it, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna shut it's myself okay. down. We I tried. love what Nova is doing now. They're playing much more calculated. Nova that we knew from Saturday 
um, Crayon is just carrying on this Zephyr. He's playing the Zephyr so well right now. And you can see Chognar is not doing much in these fights. So Thane was such a good pick into this composition. And also L'Oreal as well. L'Oreal is just doing so much work, able to slow and counter the Wonder Woman. I mean, L'Oreal just beats Wonder Woman easily in a late game because she can just dance around the Wonder Woman. And Wonder Woman has a lot of good engage, but not a lot of good mobility to stay on top to L'Oreal. So honestly, if they play their composition correctly, Nova is going to be able to take this away. We know what the strengths that Nova has provided over the last couple minutes. Meanwhile, though, we'll actually have to take a break. A Skull King might find himself out. He's going to have to be forced to jump away. Doesn't want to find himself into that. Sebka's going to take lots of tower shots. As a, again, a little bit of overzealousness has stalled Nova. We've talked about what a team's supposed to do when they get behind. Save the high ground. It's exactly what you need to get yourself back. Farm those waves. Jungle Book Squad, is that an option if they can scale themselves up over the next few minutes? Yeah, Jungle Book did such a good job there. What they needed to do on the side of Nova was wait and not crash those waves into the high ground tower so early. Kilgroth was pushing the top. We had some push on the bottom. They needed to organize all three waves and crash it to the tower at once, and they were probably would have been able to take one of these towers. So I think Nova definitely needs to think about that and not push these waves too early, organize them a little bit, and then let them crash into towers at the same time. And that's going to give them a lot easier job because they don't have an ADC. They don't have a ranged hero that has a lot of attack damage to knock these towers down safely from a far away. For those of you that are watching the Jungle Book Squad and are wondering, what is that name over on the side of Ryoma? Guys, that is Heart Stuck. Uh, he has, you know, got himself a little bit of a name change, but the uh, the the name might have been a little bit of tilting last week. He ended up found himself a little bit of heart <laughs> stuck into a green screen. As now the next Abyssal Dragon is going to get swooped up again by Nova Esports, continuously extending their lead now to seven thousand gold at the ten and a half minute mark. Yeah, this is huge. I do like the two Lindis traps. You can see she's put two traps up there at the top side, and another one. She said another one. That gives her vision, gives the team vision for two minutes. It lasts for two minutes. So that's a really good placement to see when the rotations are coming. You can see that they're taking their jungle as soon as it spawns. So this is how you want to not continue to hand over your jungle to enemy team, is try to take it and be ready. So when it spawns, you take it immediately and you get out because you do not want to fight a team that is ahead of you. Definitely not on the menu of Jungle Book Squad. However, they are facing the immeasurable power of Shere Khan. But the question is, can Mowgli find the Branch of Flames? Can they find a way to put out the power that Nova Ooh. Esports is pushing on? Just look at the damage that is coming out thus far. Skull King, despite the showing that he had in the last game, is sitting at 0-2-2. Two and two, Not the most stellar of Tulin plays that we've seen thus far. Yeah, now they're going to be able to take this bomb. They need to focus the tower, actually, but they're going to try to get the kill, and they may be able to get the kill right onto Roma, and they do. Mowgli goes in there, tries to hit the wave, and gets killed there. Really nice job by Noah. This nice of engage. Two kills go over into their favor. They've got themselves a siege minion. It's not going to be enough, but regardless, they secured themselves high ground turret number one. High ground turret number two is going to go down as well. And look at the power of Sevka and Nova. They told themselves, Jungle Book Squad, you took game number one, but we're going to walk away with game number two. It's going to be the clean sweep. It's going to be Nova. It's going to be the victory. Game three coming up soon. went over into the hands of Jungle Book Squad, but Nova went back to their explosive behaviors and secured themselves a game number two. Welcome back, Jump, Sweejay. Sweejay, I gotta tell you, man, Nova definitely found themselves in a much more advantageous position in game number two. Yeah, thank you, Nova, for keeping my win percentage alive for now, but the team fighting was definitely better. You saw them focus those team fights. You saw them have nice rotations. They gave up the Abyssal Dragon, right, free, but they did not give that Dark Slayer for free. That was the key turning point in the game. They went from an even gold lead or gold uh, difference to now a four to 5k gold lead after that Dark Slayer fight. Four towers went down after that, and that was a huge play by Nova uh, because of that one fight. It turned that game completely around for them.
Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Nova Esports does not allow for the second sneak of the Dark Slayer. And these adaptations are what these teams are constantly having to do to find themselves in much better positions near the end of each week for the Valor Series. Nova, despite the falters in game number two, have forced a game number three. So let's talk about this a little bit more. What happened in that game for the side of Jungle Book Squad? Yeah, I love that um, Dark is on L'Oreal. He just did so much work. And you saw L'Oreal did work against Nova in the first game. Dark played that L'Oreal so well. I mean, zero deaths, five kills, right? MVP in that match. Crayon, too. Crayon on Zephys. He was making a lot of plays, and like they won that key fight in the early game because of what he did on Zephyrs. So I feel like if they keep this up, Jungle Book needs to respond to that. They need to focus on killing Dark because Dark was doing so much AOE damage on L'Oreal. They need to either disengage when she has to smite up and then fight another day. But as a result, and also the key was decision making. Don't take Dark Slayer unless you do not have the advantage. And so with that now, Jungle Book Squad is going to have to lick their wounds and have the opportunity to strike back in game number three. Our sides are swapping back. Nova will be taking up the blue with red side being occupied by Jungle Book Squad. What changes in the band phase, Sweejay? Yeah, I think it's going to be the same meta bands. They're going to not change it up. I think Malak will be taken away from iFlex. Uh, Jungle Book does not want to give Malak over because I feel like that will be a first pick if that's given over to the side of uh, Jungle Book. Teamy was a typical band that they did game one. I feel like Superman definitely needs to get taken away. Malak Disney needs taken away. And then potentially, they should ban Lindis because Oxy has played Lindis both games. And his Lindis is so proficient. Or target ban Chognar. Just take Chognar off the map. Or let them have Chognar again and play Thane. So I feel like Nova has a lot of options. I was about to say, you do, you do, it's one of those situations where, well, we can go with A, we can go with B, we can go with C. I like the options that it creates because based on either one of those three directions, four directions, however it may be, allows for adaptation. And that's what no, or that's what Nova is gonna be able to create with the proactivity on the blue side. However, taking a look over at Nova, does any of their strategies change now that they've had a, now this is gonna be a second going on red side for them? Yeah, they're gonna play uh, 80, s oh, look at the, Nova's banning Lindis. The good band there, they're changing it up. And that's exactly they're what they wanna do. They're listening, CJ, they're listening to are. you. <laughs> So the key now for um, the side of Jungle Book is Nova has been running dive heavy compositions, right? They've been running Lubu with Kilgroth and they need to keep that in mind. Are they going to ban Kilgroth here and take it away from Sepka? Um, are, they may potentially there change we go. the ban. Right. So the Superman arm, definitely needs to come The arms were crossed. It was definitely the state of, are you going to make that mistake? Or is it going to be... Yeah, you don't want to give no, Superman to Nova. Do when Superman, when Lube gave Superman to Nova, they destroyed Team Noob with it. So Superman is a smart ban, an obvious ban on that side. So let's see now what the next ban. Are they going to target ban the Chognar and leave the Liliana pick open and force the side of Jungle Book to ban Liliana? Or are they going to take away uh, a side laner like Wonder Woman here, which they just did? And that's a good pick because Wonder Woman was actually pretty highly prioritized on the side of Jungle Book. So now the final ban being thrown into the fold. Liliana, does that become, that was I, what I they banned they may on. let Liliana go through because they won against Liliana, so they may let Liliana go through and ban like one of a, a key side laner that they don't want to give over, like Ryoma potentially over to the side. Well, actually, no, not, not the Ryoma, like Lubu or Kilgroth. They may take that off the map because, or even Zephys, honestly. Zephys was played really well by Crayon, um, and they may want to take Zephys off the map because Crayon played it so well and, and was a key uh, hero that won. Yep, they're going to take the Kilgroth actually instead. And that's something that Sepka just dominated side lane with. The Kilgroth dive was immeasurably successful for the side of Nova Esports in game number two. Now, taking a look at the pick priorities, Liliana was picked in game number one as the first pick for Nova. Does that become a focus again? But now with the elimination of Kilgroth, do you warrant potentially a Rioma first pick to you know secure yourself a little bit of that aggression for the early game for Nova? Yeah, I think the what what happened last time is they picked a Mina into a Chognar, and I felt like Y01 on Mina just didn't do much. But on Thane, he was able to do a lot more because of how Thane works into a Chognar. So I feel like as long as they pick a good support, Liliana would work. And the key is Liliana is just a little weak early. She has to scale into mid to late with the super amounts of poke that she has. Um, and she doesn't rotate or clear wave as fast as other mages do. So they need to make sure with the slower wave clear, 
they need to watch out for the side ganks that Jungle Book is doing to take advantage of that. Especially when Jungle Book gets Ryoma, they're going to do these side ganks and they need to watch out for that. So as we get ourselves into lobby to get this uh, pick phase over in situation, don't forget, we always are wanting to know what you're thinking, so make sure you kick over to Twitter, guys. Hashtag Valor Series. And just like that, it's the Liliana first pick for Nova. Yeah, Xenio gets through with the max here. This is a little oh, risky because you can pick Omen. You can pick Ryoma, uh, Lubu. You can pick heroes that just counter the Xenio and Max. And this is huge because Xenio wants to dive in or protect the ADC. And they're going to pick Ryoma and Omen just like I called it. And this is looking pretty good for the side of Nova because honestly, Ryoma and Omen are just so dominant against Xenio and Max. They're going to win the side lane here. Jungle Book Scott trying to secure themselves a victory with the OP of the OPs. Securing themselves those side laners, but like what you Ooh, said. Violet now being picked up. That leaves Slims. Preda getting picked up here. Now what they want to do is the thing without Violet. Oh, and they take the Zephys away. They don't give it over to Crayon, so they don't allow a dive composition onto the side of Violet. So I think Jungle Book will probably pick Chognar last, depending on what they pick on Nova side. So I think Nova should pick Thane. Exactly. Pick the Thane here because you know Moly's going to go for that Chognar. And then pick an ADC, like a Slims, if they play Slims or go for like a dive comp and that's exactly what they're going to do with Elena and this is a much better draft for Nova without the Mina they instead of and they pick the Thane here all dive all the time coming out of Nova the final pick being decided by Jungle Book Squad they're going to dock themselves in the Prada Ooh, it's going to be a support Xenio support Xenio which is interesting because Xenio is so good in side lane he's tanky the more health he builds the more damage and tank he is. He does damage based on his max percentage HP. He has the third ability, third hit that does percentage HP damage. And he has his shield, right? That does divine protection. That does HP percentage damage too, based on how much HP he has. So he could work, but as a support, not as effective. He doesn't get to scale up and build those HP items as fast. Well, we are going to get ourselves into game very shortly. But remember, as always, we want to know what you think. Who has the better shirt? Me? Him? Who is it? I don't know. <laughs> Let's let us know what your predictions are. Let us know how you feel. Make sure you head over to hashtag you head over to Twitter using the hashtag Valor Series. You're not hashtagging with Twitter. You're Twittering with a hashtag, right? Something like that. Exactly. Or another Valor Series, guys. Make sure you let us know. Game number three is about to be underway. Is this where you use your mulligan of the day, Sweet Jay? Are you are you feeling a little less confident? No, on based Nova? on Nova's playing, they got the all okay. comfort picks. I think they got this. Okay. All Just right. Win early game, guys. Win early game. That was that was a look of pure pure confidence coming out to the side of Sweet Jay. So Go Supernova. There we go. <laughs> there we go. That's what I was waiting for, Sweet Jay. Now we're getting in. Now we're getting in the spicy moments. So let's talk a little bit about this early game. Obviously, Nova's early game is something that they've prioritized very well. Is there a way with this composition that you have with the support Xenial that you can negate some of that early game if you're Jungle Book Squad? Yeah, you want to just dive in there, but like early game, they have to rotate as they're, they do that. Nova does a lot of these really awesome four to five man rotations. So I feel like they need to continue to do that. They're really good at these rotations that catches the enemy team off guard. And look at this, they're expect, they actually anticipated them defending the blue and they're going for the red instead. And look at, they're able to catch Max out and they might get a kill here potentially. So really well played there. It pushes Max off and now they're able to secure the uh, red on the side of Jungle Book. And look at what Iflex is doing. He's basically denying Mowgli to try to get the red and invade here. But Mowgli will rotate with his team to try to con contest the red. And looks like they're collapsing onto Jungle Book, which it's is going to be really good. Four members for both of these teams are on the bottom side of the map. You're going to see Y01 charging in. He's still only level one. You got a couple mixed experiences for both of these teams, but Zero One's gonna end up picking that kill onto Mowgli, securing themselves first blood. Oxy, meanwhile, taking a lot of damage from that second ability of the Rioma. And we've seen Rioma be such a powerhouse in the early stages of these matches. Yeah, this is looking so good for the side of Nova so far. This is exactly what they want to do. Be aggressive, slow down the counter engage. That was such a beautiful distraction by Iflex there, pushing Mowgli out. And then because he's in that jungle, giving vision on his team, they're able to respond and rotate down to counter. And Iflex escaped with a sliver of his health on Lubu there, and as a result, 
forced Jungle Book to overextend. And look at this combo there from the Thane and the Kraken there on Ryoma. And this is why Ryoma is so good in early game and why he's picked so often. Not only that, but he synchronizes so well with the Thane. The lockup allowing the cycle, the ability cycle and rotation coming out of Kraken's Ryoma to show all that power. And so now we're starting to see the very standard movements of Nova Esports, getting themselves a lead, getting themselves ahead, and starting to get the ball rolling down the snowy field hill, hoping for that snowball as they're going to get themselves off a little bit onto the stage side jungle. It will be secured there by Hardstuck, but all the while it's gonna be four members. I like these four-man rotations. They're not allowing for one, they're not allowing for two. Every member that's available from the side of Nova is getting off at every time they can. Crayon's gonna be able to pick up wow. that kill on the hard stuck. Mogu's gonna try to get that support, but Oxy will walk away with the victory. That's gonna be a kill going into the favor of the Violet, but she still will end up losing her life five to one in favor of yeah, Nova. Yeah, look at what's happening in the side lane here. This is allowing the rotations that we see from Nova. Iflex is clearly winning against the Xenio. Xenio and Violet just can't do much against the Lubu. Um, they're actually sidling the Violet, and she, although she has the range, she just can't uh, contest against a Lubu that's able to clear waves so fast and put so much pressure. And you can see Omen just dominating the Max. Omen completely counters Max in the lane matchup. And if Max wants to out over, Omen can just easy take one or two towers with ease. So this is a really good draft by the side of Nova, and they're completely abusing their lane matchups right now. The bleeding has started for the side of Jungle Book Squad. They're gonna have to find a way to get themselves some mud, kind of, you know, patch it up a little bit. What are those tactics? What's gonna be the mud to stop the bleeding here for Jungle Book Squad? Yeah, Jungle Book needs to try to, uh, they need to secure their jungle and just let Violet kind of scale up and get damage and then get an uneven fight here, like exactly what they're doing here. But look at the amount of damage in that Thane ultimate. A little too early though. However, they're able to catch Mowgli off guard and might be able to get the kill on him. But he actually goes back in instead of trying to Malice out. And he escapes with a sliver of his health. And Skull King, with that rotation, coming down, landing the Peg Spectre and the Poison Gas Bomb combo. Again, Skull King is a beast on this Preda. We were talking about that as we coming into game number one, the power of Skull King's Preda and creating that opportunity. He is gonna have plenty of options concerning the fact that he does have a very hardcore front line with Mowgli and Madeline playing that Xenial and Max respectively but he's also gonna have to be careful on the position because there's lots of diving opportunities for the side of Nova. Yeah, you gotta look at Sepka here. He has 2K gold lead over the max at 1.6. So he is getting fed and farming up the side lane there. Once Omen gets super fed and gets tanky, he can go in with Death's Embrace, his ultimate. He can lock down the Violet easily because he has that flicker ability. He can go in there, creates Death's Embrace, it lasts for five seconds. It traps the hero inside uh, his little gauntlet for five seconds. And this is a play that no one needs to turn on here. They need to get a pick here, get the dragon, and get some kills. Let's see, let's see what's gonna happen. As now Abyssal Dragon will end up going wow. out into the favor of the Crayon, wiping that one from the rest of the map. Hardstuck is gonna find himself in a hard place as Hyflex is able to pick himself that kill. A nice little flank there coming onto Dark. The Liliana wasn't as much of a factor in game number one, but the prowess that we're seeing coming out of Dark is definitely showing in yeah, game three. Yeah, I wish Liliana changed to Fox form in that fight. Iflex got a huge three to four man knockup in that fight. If Nova Dark went in there and transformed to Fox form and then used his abilities to just burst people down, they would have turned that fight down really quickly in their favor, but instead he doesn't. And look at that beautiful stun there, the Binding Light hitting Madeline and getting the kill onto the max, and Mowgli is in a really rough spot. Sevka is gonna end up trying to pick up that kill onto Mowgli. Mowgli will end up going down, however, it is Dark to pick up that kill. Crayon, meanwhile, will find himself in a heap of Jungle Book Squad members, will end up falling, and so it is still gonna be a two for one in favor of Nova, but they were able to get themselves just a little bit of a recoil kill. Yeah, look at that rotation there. He's gonna be able to get the tower here. It looks like they're gonna give over a free tower to the side of Nova. Oxy does rotate in time, but is he gonna save the tower? No, he will not. Now this opens up the dragon side of the map. Now Nova can continue to assert dominance on that side, secure dragons, and now start taking the jungle. But they have to get a jungle rotation timer onto the side of Jungle Book so that Nova can continue to invade and make sure that they don't touch their their blue side of the jungle. Six and a half minutes in this game, 4,000 gold in favor of Nova Esports, playing back to their name, Sen, and the super early powerful early game that they've had. Supernova is potentially coming out as Sweejay has predicted. Oh. 
as now we're starting to see another rough opportunity. You've got a little bit of a heal coming out of Mowgli, but it's not going to be enough as Dark ends up going ultimate, showing the team his light. Mowgli going to have to be forced to walk away. But again, Nova just steamrolling. Yeah, that Liliana, Dark on Liliana, he's doing such a good job of landing his stuns on Liliana, doing so much work there. I mean, those stuns are setting up so many good plays for his team, and following out with the AoE damage that they have, Dark right now is playing Liliana so well. Plenty of a lead in favor of Nova. 5,000 gold deficit. We've seen this before, sorry, 6,000 gold deficit now by Jungle Book Squad. We've seen this before. We've talked about it plenty of times, Sweejay. Is there an opportunity for Jungle Book Squad to come back? Or is this aggression by Nova just going to be too large at this point? Yeah, it's pretty large right now. They need to catch Nova off guard and fight an uneven matchup, like a four, a five versus a four, um, and et cetera. So right now, Nova is rotating really well. They're going to start focusing on the Dark Slayer here. And it's great job, you know, with Lubu tanking. His ultimate Conqueror allows him to tank so much damage and life steal all back. It looks like they're going to be able to take this Dark Slayer uncontested, which is going to allow them to push even more towers against Jungle Book. Jungle Book finding themselves in a much more difficult position, not wanting to find themselves back into relegation. They already had to fight through that last Saturday. They don't want to find themselves in that same position again because we all know, you know, the, the, the scary fact of the relegations is the fact that just because you find yourself there, yes, you can get yourself in the top eight, but if you lose, Sweej, you have to go right back into yeah. the gauntlet that's the open qualifier. Exactly. So you have to win your relegation because if you don't, you're going to go right back into the open qualifier, qualifier gauntlet. And a lot of teams are showing up. We saw um, non-toxic esports from NA come show up here. And now Team Queso, a, new t a newcomer into this top eight. So it's great to see how the competitive scene is continuing to develop. And look at what Nova is doing. They're continuing to push their lead. They're taking the jungle, and they're going to take another top tower because of the distraction that Sepka is doing. Sepka is so good at solo lane pushing. He's creating such a distraction, and he's forcing the enemy team to respond to him. Because if they do not respond to Sepka, he's going to continue to take more and more towers. More and more towers might be falling to Jungle Book. Three, to be exact, have been taken thus far. As now Mowgli and Sevka again are finding themselves. There's that ultimate coming out, not allowing him to move. He's going to actually be forced to ultimate away. He also hit himself, I think. <laughs> so he hit himself. Oh, and they take it there. Look at that. They're continuing to just dominate John. This is exactly what Nova needs to do. They need to go ahead and continue to starve jungle and really make some plays um, here. As now we're coming up on this 10 minute mark, and it is still the power of Nova coming through. Crayon's going to have to be forced to heal and run away as Skull King's ultimate comes down. But look at that damage coming out of Liliana. There's a reason why she's put to the bench many times. 3-0 and 6 has already completed over the Magi as well as that Boomstick. Picking themselves up on her third item very shortly. Yeah, I'm so impressed with how Dark is playing Liliana. He's landing so many clutch Binding Lights. Binding Light is... Lydia fires his magic missile, it explodes on enemy target, and it stuns them for a solid one second. And if, if they can get a lot of these stuns off, and look at that damage coming from Liliana there, transforming to Fox Form and taking the pick up. That's exactly how you want to play Liliana. This is why she's such a good mage. She outpokes the entire enemy team. Like, Preda is not good into Liliana because Liliana it literally is the counter to every mage. They cannot outrange her Shining Light, which has an effective range of 1,600 units, which is more than any other mage can. And look at that beautiful stun there, and they're not able to get the kill, and Skull King gets away just in time. I want to I want to draw it over to the talents for a second, Sweejay. We, we've seen the power of the, the double punish that we had over the side of Nova, the standard single punish that we see uh, many teams play, but zero punish is actually on the side of Nova. We might actually have to pause that piece of analysis as Mowgli is going to wow. find himself done. Xenial the Immaculate finds himself as Xenial the Dead as he ends up going straight to the gray screen, 11-4 to four in favor of Nova Esports. Yeah, and that's exactly what they need. These four to five-man rotation is what Nova is known for, and they're just catching Jungle Book off guard here. And look at the Liliana diving in there, doing so much damage, and look at the Reiki shot landing and doing so much damage, securing the kill there. Bloodbath is happening here for Nova Esports. Nova has gone supernova, and the big boom has been creating success as they have been wow. completely... <laughs> 
demolishing. It is a soft ace. Mowgli yeah. did end up respawning, but all the while he was down throughout the entirety of that fight, not able to use that oh so powerful ultimate to his advantage as Zero One is gonna try to get himself off iFlex. Don't think it's gonna be enough. Oh, he lands a knockup and the Oh, there comes Dark. Dark is playing so well early on. He's landing all these key biting light stuns. And he's transforming to Fox from at the right time. When the, when the enemy is low and taking these kills, because Liliana, although she does a lot of bursts, she is extremely squishy. So you gotta be very careful with how you play her. And Dark is just playing her so well. He carried in the game as L'Oreal in game two. Now he's carrying in the game right now as Liliana in game three here, doing an awesome job. So one thing I wanna talk about is what Skull King. Skull King is the key to the side of Jungle Book. Yes. He is so good on Preda. What he needs to do is they need to help set up his win condition. Preda is so powerful because Preda can use Plague Spectre and the Poison Gas Bomb to slow and knock people into the Plague Spectre. And then Preda can then use Ultimate, right? Once you turn the ultimate on for Preda, it resets both abilities. So you can then chase Plague Spectre again and Poison Gas Bomb, which Poison Gas Bomb in the ultimate form becomes a stun, not a slow. So that's what they need to do is they need to leverage that combo ability, that five ability combo that Preda has to beat the side of Nova here. That's the only chance right now, is to execute something like that to win these fights. Let's highlight the one with the most amount of gold as well on its side of Jungle Book Squad. A pick that we have used to been seeing at the tail end, because she ends up being banned all the time, Oxy, on that Violet, despite the fact that she has about a thousand more gold in her pocket than the rest of her team, hasn't had that much of an effect against this Nova roster. Yeah, it hasn't. And look at that. They need to secure the sound. Look at the damage coming out. Zephys is going to be taken out immediately. And wow, look at this fight. And that Thane ultimate actually missed. He missed that Thane ultimate. And that was a rough play. And now Nova has to disengage. We just talked about the power of Oxy, that it hasn't been showing up thus far. But he ends up picking that kill. It's one for one. Y01 is going to be able to catch himself out to the last tower attack. And the shutdowns are going to come out out of Oxy. Meanwhile, Iflex is going to do everything he can to secure himself. It's a little bit of victory, but here we are. It is the power of Violet indeed. Crayon, meanwhile, was able to take himself a high ground turret. So split focus, but the Nova team still walks away with the victory in that high ground yeah, turret. Yeah, that's key. Getting a high ground turret is important. And look how low the mid high ground turret is. That is huge for the side of Nova because now super mains are going to deploy. They have not lost any of their own towers. This gives them so much map pressure and control because if they try to rush Dark there on the side of Jungle Book, Nova can easily rotate because they have the, they have the jungle and map control because they have not lost any towers. They have it indeed. Almost 15 minutes into the game, despite the fact of the overwhelming difference of 8,000 gold in favor of Nova Esports, you have triple goose eggs on the side of Jungle Book Squad. No towers, no slayers, no dragons, and that is not a statistic that you're probably happy for at this stage in the game. Yeah, it isn't a statistic. They are now behind close to 9k gold lead. Um, so Jungle Book needs to be careful and not get caught out here. That's exactly what Nova's gonna do. They're gonna posture and set up for a Dark Slayer here, and that's gonna be a key fight there, is who's gonna win the fight? for the Dark Slayer, or who's gonna secure the Dark Slayer and then win the fight is gonna turn around this game completely. As now we found ourselves in a little bit of a lull as the member of Nova Esports are going to acquire every piece of objective that they have. Y01 gonna do a little bit of scouting. Remember, there are no vision possibilities outside of the Seagull in Arena of Valor. And so face checking, despite the scary uh, potentials that it creates, is going to be the Ooh, best way to scout things He used Death Embracer. Mowgli is trapped in there, but he's a tank. So Mowgli will be able to survive the damage from Sipka. I feel like Sipka should save his ultimate for a team fight. I mean, you lock down Violet, you lock down anyone in that Death Embrace, Nova's going to be able to easily destroy them. But look at Violet's items here. Violet has four tier three damage items. So. Honestly, Jungle Book has a way to come back into this game. She is pretty fed at 10.6k gold, equal and close to the gold of the other carries on the enemy team. So I feel like Jungle Book has a chance to come back as long as they can protect Violet and keep her long enough to get these kills and turn the fight around. You also have the continuous scaling of Skull King as well. While he has completed three items just far, the Spoopy Mask being completed to get the piece of the puzzles. Coming up a little bit closer for item number four. 
but all the meanwhile, it's going to require positioning as well as the solid tank of Madalena Mugler. We haven't seen much Max present uh, either. The the fact that he's oh so far behind. Oh my goodness, look at that damage from Liliana Dart just making plays. Oh my god, that combo, that Binding Light and Shining Light combo just did so much damage on her Prado. And just like that, Nova Esports is going to come in, do wow. the damage, ignore the final two members. Dart walking away, carrying the rest of his team, each tail making sure to lift the weight, and just like that, Nova wins.